Well, by now you've probably heard about the Raven Ridge Ryzen 5 or Ryzen Plus Vega on one piece of silicon. You can build a computer that has a built-in iGPU that's actually pretty good. Uh, you don't have to have a separate discrete add-in graphics card and you're actually able to play most modern games at you know low, medium, low settings. But hey, you can do it. And in this climate where graphics cards are crazy expensive, maybe that's a welcome thing because you can always upgrade down the line. Behind me, I've got a Ryzen 5 2400G system that we've put through the paces. We've done some hypotheticals, but this is not your average benchmarking video. I feel like that a lot of other places have covered the benchmarking. Let's talk about the thought process, the upgrade path, and some options that you have between Ryzen 3 2200G with Vega Graphics and the Ryzen 5. All right, so the new products in AMD's lineup, it's the Ryzen 5 2400G and the Ryzen 3 2200G. Both of these have built-in Vega graphics. They're what's called APUs. They're the modern version of an APU, sort of an all-in-one processing unit. I don't, well, no, I don't really want to say that, but trying to make a joke, failed, it's okay, we'll live, it's all good. Basically, there's one chip that you buy from AMD that has graphics capability as well as uh, you know, compute capability. It's, it's, it's a central processing unit, but you also do graphics on it. Now, you're probably familiar with this from laptops or maybe the Intel iGPU. The built-in Intel graphics really has a terrible reputation for gaming. It's sort of the bottom of the barrel. Intel really hasn't done anything to advance their iGPU, as evidenced by bundling Vega with their own. I mean, Intel is also bundling Vega, so I mean, imagine that. But these are substantially more uh, inexpensive parts. These are these are great options for a system builder potentially. So we want to take a look at the hard numbers. We want to know like what circumstances does this make sense. So first, let's take a look at our build. This build is the Fractal Define Meshify C Mini. It's a micro ATX tower case. Comes with a tempered glass side panel. It's perhaps a little ostentatious for a budget build, but hey, if you're gonna go gonna go in style, right? Works out pretty good. I've selected a 450 or 500 watt Antec power supply. That is extreme overkill for this build, but I'm planning on maybe upgrading the CPU or upgrading the GPU a little bit down the road or later in this video for comparison's sake. We'll talk more about that in a minute. I've also got some G-Skill um, memory, uh, the Flare X memory. Pretty decent deal on that. I've tried some other memory in here as well. I've also got the ADATA XPG NVMe, and I've got the uh, MSI B350 uh, M Gaming Pro. So this is a micro ATX board, MSI with their naming conventions. When you get the extra letter at the M, it gives you a hint about what the uh, board form factor is, at least in these generations, the uh, more recent boards. So we've got the B350M Gaming Pro. And I'm going to have a separate review of the B350 Gaming M Pro, but for now, for what we're talking about for this build, uh, this thing is pretty solid. It's actually damned impressive. The Ryzen 3 2200 and the Ryzen 5 2400G, make no mistake about it, are incredible values. Those CPUs retail for 99 and 169 at the time of this video. You may be able to get them on sale or with special or with bundles, especially if you have a Fry's or a Micro Center or something like that. But it's these these work really well. If you want to play a game at 720p, that's 1280 by 720, or even 1080p, especially esports titles. These CPUs will do that, and you don't have to buy a graphics card in a time when graphics cards are insanely, wildly expensive. Now, I will tell you that you also have some overclocking headroom, especially if you get the faster RAM. These CPUs, Raven Ridge is their code name, support up to 2933 megahertz memory with the latest updates. It works really, really well when you have 2933, and even if you overclock a little bit to like 3200, because you're increasing the memory speed between the Vega graphics card and the CPU. You probably already knew that. You probably already realized that. So if you can overclock the RAM, you're gonna realize a benefit on the graphics card side of things. And it really does hold true in the benchmarks. In fact, there are tons and tons of other sites that you can get benchmarks for your individual specific game that you're curious about to see how it performs. We tested a bunch of games here at level one. You know, everything from GTA 5, we even ran the new Final Fantasy benchmark. The numbers for all of those benchmarks were astonishingly good. Now, I mean, let's keep in mind that this is a $169 part, not a $700 graphics card, but still, if you want to play these games reasonably well, I think this game's better than a console. So, 
you know, 30 to 60 FPS in a lot of these titles at low and medium low settings. The eSports titles fare a little bit better. You can expect about 60 FPS out of them, at, depending on the resolution and, and some other factors, but that's really, really impressive for these particular setups. I'm gonna have to go against the grain a little bit here with a lot of the other mainstream reviews though. I think a lot of other people that have picked up this hardware, maybe both the Ryzen 3 and the Ryzen 5 with Vega graphics, are saying, well, the Ryzen 3 is far and away the best value. And I would not disagree with that. If that's the only thing that exists in the world from now until the time you replace that machine, Ryzen 3, it's a good value and it's hard to go wrong. It is hard to justify paying the extra money for the Ryzen 5 at that moment in time. But if you look at it holistically, if you look at it over a one or two year term, I think I would pick Ryzen 5, the Ryzen 5 2400G. And I'm gonna pick the Ryzen 5 2400G for two reasons. One, the four cores, eight threads will really help you, not today, but a year or two down the road. Fact is, most games today are really set up for four cores. We have Intel to think for that because Intel's kept four cores on the desktop since Sandy Bridge CPUs. So more than five years. Um, the, the situation with games is a lot of games are super heavily optimized for four cores. We're only just now starting to see that. A lot of AMD proponents way back in the 8350 days was saying, hey, eight cores on this bulldozer architecture, it's gonna be faster than four cores, and on paper it was, but you've still gotta have that single thread, that IPC performance. And AMD has definitely learned that lesson because you can overclock this guy to four gigahertz, 4.1 gigahertz, even on the relatively modest B350 motherboard from MSI. I mean, that's, that's just, what a time to be alive. I mean, it really is genuinely exciting. I just, I can't, I can't get excited enough about the fact that you can get this kind of performance with a relatively small spend. But wait, 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 why, why are you so enamored with the Ryzen 5 2400G versus the Ryzen 3? The Ryzen 3 is clearly the, clearly the better deal, costs significantly less, you could put that into other components of your system and have better overall performance. Again, that's not really untrue. I think the only scenario where I would recommend a Ryzen 3 is if you knew in the future when you were going to upgrade your system that you were also going to upgrade and replace your CPU. Make no mistake about it, AM4 is a long-lived platform. That means that you're gonna be able to get lots of different models of CPUs for the next two, maybe three generations. We're just on the cusp at the time of this video of Zen Plus coming out, and Zen Plus, again, is gonna be AM4 compatible. This motherboard actually has been out since before the CPU. This motherboard has been out for a while now, originally set up for the uh, Ryzen CPUs, not Ryzen plus Vega. But hey, just a firmware update, and you're good to go with Ryzen plus Vega graphics, which is hugely impressive. And that's how it's going to be for the next two or three generations of devices, CPU devices from AMD on these boards. So the question for me is thinking about future me and can I make life a little easier on future me? So right now today, Ryzen 3 2200G, for a system like this, especially for esports, probably is the best deal that you can possibly get on the market. But I'm thinking about future me. Is there anything that I can do to make future me's life a little easier? And so I'm thinking about what is the first thing that I'm gonna do with this system after I've had it for a year or two? I'm probably gonna upgrade the graphics card. And then it starts to, starts to make more sense. It's like, well, that Ryzen 3, four cores, four threads, it's probably gonna bottleneck. We've had four cores and four threads on the desktop, on mainstream desktops for over five years. It's easy to imagine that games would take advantage of more threads in the future. Ah, Ryzen 5, 2400G, that would give us four cores, eight threads. That's gonna perform a little better. So I can't really travel into the future and get a $200 to $300 graphics card, you know, a year or two or three down the road. Those maybe have only just been designed because you know that, that whole process takes a while. So I, I can't travel into the future and get a graphics card, but maybe a contemporary mainstream equivalent would work. So I've got the GTX 1070 Ti from MSI. This thing is pretty nuts. You've got the twin Frozer design, super high performance. It works really astonishingly well. This is a really high-end graphics card. Obviously buying this graphics card today for this machine, Vega plus integrated graphics, that doesn't make any sense. But I think this card will work as a fine stand-in for something that you might buy in the future to upgrade your system. The question on my mind is, will a nice card like this bottleneck on a Ryzen 5 2400G? And I think the answer is probably no, 
but let's run the test and find out. So to complete the test, we're also gonna do um, a CPU upgrade. We're gonna replace our Raven Ridge Ryzen 5 2400 CPU with a 1700X. It's not too hard to imagine that maybe in the future I would wanna swap both the graphics card and the CPU, because that'll give me eight cores, 16 threads on this B350 motherboard. And I think that would work really well too. So maybe in the future, the, the landscape of games change. Maybe you really do need that eight core CPU after all. And in that case, if you think maybe you would upgrade your CPU, that kind of tilts the scales back in favor of the Ryzen 3. But I think that you're not gonna need to replace that Ryzen 5 quite as quickly as you would need to replace the Ryzen 3. I think if you're planning to do your CPU, GPU upgrade in a year or so, you probably could get by with a Ryzen 3. But if you need that Ryzen 5 to last, or if you need your CPU to last a couple of years, Ryzen 5 2400G, that's my pick. And the reason that I would wanna do that is to get more longevity out of the hardware. It'll be worth more when I'm done with it, when I'm trading up. And if I am in a situation where I do need more CPU horsepower, well, I can just swap that out. I don't even have to upgrade the motherboard. I can literally just pop the CPU out and pop a graphics card in, whatever the future equivalent of the 1070 Ti is. Maybe put a 1700X or, you know, 2700 or something like that in the future in this system. I don't think I would even upgrade to a six core. I think it would go straight from four to eight cores or maybe from four to 12 cores if AMD comes out with a CPU that fits this. Unlike the Intel platform, AMD has promised a long-term commitment to AM4, and actually these CPUs with integrated Vega are the first set of CPUs for AM4 after the original set of Ryzen CPUs that came out a year ago. So AMD is making good on its promise, and the performance for eSports and everything else like that has been really, really good. We did a bunch of benchmarking. Let's go through the benchmarking and actually look at the performance and see where we are. And there you have it. Even if you do a super high-end upgrade with the GTX 1070 Ti, our benchmarks show that there's not really any significant bottlenecking with the Ryzen 5 2400G. Four cores, eight threads delivers on performance. I don't have a Ryzen 3 2200 to confirm that the uh, you know Ryzen 5 would, would bottleneck maybe where the Ryzen 3 doesn't. I'm not really suggesting that. I'm just saying that you get a little bit more headroom with the Ryzen 5, and to me, that's worth the price difference. Of course, if I was willing to do the extra spend for a CPU upgrade, I would be less concerned about going with a Ryzen 3 because you could just swap your CPU. But if you're looking to get to a graphics card upgrade, ASAP, you know, 1060, 1070, maybe an RX 580, something like that for your, your graphics card update, especially if you can get a deal on it. Not in this graphics card climate. Oh, graphics cards are way too expensive right now. But a year, in two years, 18 months, something like that down the road would be a really easy upgrade for the system. Literally just plug it in and you're good to go. And that's also why we went with a 400 to 500 watt power supply for this build. It's still overkill, even with a 1070 Ti, even with its dual power pin, requirements, this CPU, the Ryzen 5, even if we upgraded to a Ryzen 7, say 120 watts for the CPU and all the paraphernalia, that's gonna give us you know, 300 watts for our graphics card. So we can put up to a 300 watt graphics card in this system and still have plenty of room. So you, know, you can get the lesser expensive, I probably wouldn't go less than 350 watts for upgradability, but 400 watts to 500 watts, 
uh, would be ideal for a system like this with future upgrades in mind. It's been a lot of fun sort of running the numbers and doing the thought experiment, but Ryzen 5 2400G is definitely my value pick for right now, even over the Ryzen 3, just because of the promise for the future that it has. The four extra threads, I think, will, will make a little bit of a difference in terms of performance. And, I, you know, I'm just kind of, it's a little anecdotal, but it's just based on my own personal experiences. Hi, I'm Past Wendell, and I just want to interject for a moment because I'm sure the future Wendell is going to forget about the whole Ryzen 5 2400G, Ryzen 3 2200G FreeSync. FreeSync is supported. It works great. You can even run your desktop resolution at 4K. You're not going to be gaming at 4K, not really, unless it's a really old title. But you can run 4K and you get FreeSync. And FreeSync is really important when you're talking about games that run at around 30 FPS. Well, I happen to have one of the Cadillac monitors for FreeSync. This is an MG279Q gaming monitor from ASUS. It is a great monitor, supports FreeSync. FreeSync implementation on this monitor is pretty good. Bad news, it's generally not gonna work with Raven Ridge because most Raven Ridge motherboards don't have DisplayPort and this requires DisplayPort, or at least most AMD, you know, whether it's X370 or B350, don't have a DisplayPort out for your monitor. So I suspect that whatever vendor comes up with a AM4 motherboard that has built-in DisplayPort first is probably gonna win uh, in terms of like the gamer board because you can get these older FreeSync monitors and then use them. For now, with the motherboard that I have, the B350M from MSI, I've got HDMI out, and DVI out, and VGA out. So no display port, and that means I'm gonna need a monitor that supports FreeSync on HDMI. A lot of monitors in their spec don't say if FreeSync is enabled for all of the inputs, or one of the inputs, typically just DVI, or DVI and HDMI. So be careful when you're picking up your monitor if you're gonna count on FreeSync support. And with the FPS that you will be running, especially around 1080p, I definitely would recommend FreeSync because it completely changes the game experience for the better when we're talking about these kinds of frame rates. Well, if this piques your interest and you're gonna build a system with no discrete graphics card with an integrated GPU, I wanna hear from you in the forums at Level 1 Techs. Post pictures and show off your system. Let's take a look. <laughs> and everybody can make fun of your cabling job. I myself, I prefer mustard and ketchup. Not really, but hey, it's a budget build. I splurged on the Meshify C, what more do you want? I'm Wendell Love signing out. I'll see you later.